Hi, I'm Jane Silver. I'm, <laughs> I'm from Canonical. It's nice to be here. So um, there's sort of two theories about keynotes. One is that you you start telling a story and you build to a crescendo and there's a, a rousing call to action at the end and you hope to bring the audience along with you as you tell that story. Um, the other is that you to say the most important thing first uh, and, and put it out there at the very beginning of the thing you want everybody to remember. I'm going to follow the, the latter of those paths, um, particularly if there's anybody with short attention spans and laptops in front of them. My call to action at the end is going to be to ask you to go look at this website and try it out. This is the website around Snaps, which is that packaging format that I, that I just talked about. And I hope over the next 20 minutes or so to, to convince you why that's, why that's interesting interesting and, and nice, but this is where I'd like you to hopefully end up at the end of the talk. Um, Ubuntu is a general purpose operating system. I'm guessing that many of you are familiar with it. I'm guessing that many of you use it already. So a quick show of hands of who's an Ubuntu user. Excellent. I feel as though I'm in very, very safe hands here. Um, lots of you probably use it on your development laptop. Some of you probably develop cloud-based services on top of it. Some of you may even have an Ubuntu phone and increasingly an Ubuntu IoT device in the form of a, of a next cloud box. Um, we really span that gamut from cloud to edge. And it's, it's not just as a developer box. There's many organizations that, that build their company enterprise infrastructure on top of Ubuntu. This is a sample of some of our some of our enterprise customers who are building large scale operations on Ubuntu um, either in their data center or on the cloud. 70% of AWS images are Ubuntu based images. It really is the the platform for any scale out operations and architecture. Um, Walmart, for example, walmart.com is all run on Ubuntu. It's, a, it's an OpenStack cloud, which is built on Ubuntu, and then Ubuntu guest images on top to power that entire online retail experience for, for Walmart. Um, and it's not just that cloud, that cloud uh, server um, area where there's an explosion of scale out. In many ways, the same thing or an analogous thing is happening at the edge um, as edge compute grows. And Ubuntu is, has found a, a home there as, as the, the default choice for operating systems. These are some of the examples of areas where we're working. IoT, as you know, is one of those terms that kind of means anything to anybody. And, and so I've tried to organize it more in specific verticals of, of where we're seeing concrete projects and it's from everything from robots and drones um, just a couple weeks ago there was an announcement from Parrot uh, of a new developer drone called the Slam Dunk which I think is a great name for a drone and it's a it's one of their traditional drones and then they've put a, a new piece of compute on top running Ubuntu and it's for developers to develop new apps to control the drone in, in new and innovative ways and we're seeing more and more of that of these edge devices that previously were, you could think of as single function devices, becoming app enabled um, and really bringing the, the flexibility that that additional compute power brings um, to bear. Gateways um, and networking devices writ large actually, rather whether they be home, ga home networking devices or top of rack switches um, are a perfect place for that general person purpose operating system with the with the functional device in an app and an extendability of, that that provides. There's a lot of interesting work happening now in um, self-driving cars. All the self-driving cars that, that we're aware of are, are based on Ubuntu, whether it's, it's Google. Um, I just saw Uber just within the last week or so, there's been talk of it and articles around the Uber self-driving car. That's also Ubuntu-based. Um, and it's, a, it's another sign of that innovation that gets unleashed on top of, on top of the platform. And that, that thrills us. We love that. And, and that's part of the reason we're excited about the next cloud boxes, because we're really excited to see what, what you all and other users will, will do with the device. 
Um, and it is that, that passion and innovation that comes from developers that drives much of this. In the IoT space um, itself, we see a lot of activity around ROS, which is the, the open source project, the robotic operating system. Um, a lot of the blockchain development and, and AI work is happening on Ubuntu. And that is part of what's driving this explosion of um, innovation around the edge and in IoT devices. It's not the only thing, of course. The other, at a, at a market level, the, the costs of sensors are dropping dramatically, the compute costs are dropping, bandwidth costs are dropping in general. The, the greater acceptance of, of open source um, and a couple other economic areas are, are driving this explosion in IoT devices. Um, that that's happening broadly across the industry. There's all sorts of um, projections that you can see in market data, um, all of which disagree with each other, but have the common characteristic of going steeply up and to the right. Um, there's projections of, of three times as many uh, smart connected devices as the human as the number of humans on Earth by about 2020, so that's not that that far off. Um, and I think those I think those are those are right. Of course, that that explosion of devices brings all sorts of new innovation and and opportunity and capabilities and and ways in which human life can be improved, but there's also risks that come with it. These are a couple headlines that have been out recently. I expect you may have seen them. This is the one uh, on your right is, is a kid named Decker. Somebody hacked into the, the baby monitor system and was talking to the family's uh, child in the middle of the night, which is horrifying in, in any way. The one on the left of the Jeep, these were folks who um, hacked into a, a smart car, um, a connected car basically, um, and took control over it. This was white hat hackers. The, the picture makes it look more dramatic than, uh, <laughs> than it was, but it was to prove a point rather than a malicious hacking. But I think what's really interesting about that example um, is not that it happened. I don't think anybody would be surprised that as, as car makers are adding this increased connectivity into cars that there's vulnerabilities there, particular, particularly at the beginning. But I think what's most interesting there is to fix it, they had to recall the cars. They had to bring all the cars back to a central location or a local location to update the software on them. And that's the telling piece or one of the telling pieces when you think about all the devices that are going to exist out there, the implications of upgrading them if you have to take them somewhere or if a manufacturer has to go to them and do a, a, a truck roll to put maintenance people in the field is, is just not um, sustainable in any way. And that's one of the things that we've been thinking about in terms of, of the operations that go along with this proliferation of, of devices. Um, not just in the data center, but also at the edge. There are other there are other loads of examples about of scary things that are happening. This is a chart of the the proliferation of ransomware. Um, what's what's telling here is the pace at which these things are coming out. Um, when there's when there's a target from something like once a quarter just a couple years ago to to tens per quarter um, now, it means you, it, it highlights the importance of being able to do those updates uh, safely and regularly. This is another example that I think is really interesting. Um, I'll give you a second to read the headline if you, if you haven't heard of this before. This is the US fining a device manufacturer for, for having poor security and upgrade policies and, and procedures. Um, that's a really significant shift and, and very, um, I think, telling about what we'll see in the future. Up until now, nobody's really cared what operating system is running in a company's 
phone system in all of the conference rooms or in the projectors in the rooms. You know, those are, there's probably a Linux in there. It's probably a, a, some Linux that the developers of the hardware device put together. It's probably never been updated. Um, and at one point that didn't really matter. They were standalone devices, but now they're attached to company infrastructure. They're attached to your company network, which brings them much more into the realm of enterprise infrastructure. All of a sudden those, those um, projectors and phone systems and lifts in a building um, become enterprise infrastructure with the same security and maintainability requirements that people have traditionally thought of around their, around their servers. Um, think about those, all those smart connected devices in relation to the things that, that we know how to respond quickly to in the data center, um, but the, the devices in your home, your home router, um, well, in this crowd, many of you have probably updated yours, <laughs> but in another, another event, most people would not have ever, would not have ever updated those or even been aware, be aware of the, the risks involved. Um, and so what, what that brings is an importance on, on security and uh, maintainability and specifically operations. Not just the one-time fix, not just a, we can put out something secure once, but a, but a f built for the future and a, a way to enable efficient operating of these devices and management of these devices that, um, that suits the, the environment and the, the speed and the flexibility that has to be required. And that's what's driven us to, to this notion of SNAPs, um, because SNAPs as a construct enable that, and many more things as well. Um, so um, let me just go on to the next slide. SNAPs are, this, are a new, universal packaging system. They absolutely work on Ubuntu, but they're not limited to Ubuntu. If your favorite operating system is, is something other than Ubuntu, that, sh that should be fine as well. Um, on the right-hand side of the slide are some examples of, of existing snaps and some of the popular ones, but there are many others. It's a growing, it's a growing set now of what, what's available basically in a store. Um, and I, I hope that that if you have a favorite a favorite app or service, that you'll give it a try um, and and see what it's like to snap that up. The feedback we get is that it's a really a really enjoyable, empowering experience. We tell we have people come back just so excited because it relieves so many of their of their issues. Recently, the Rocket Chat folks. Do you guys know what Rocket Chat is? <laughs> Um, recently, the Rocket Chat folks snapped up Rocket Chat and were thrilled with the experience in terms of how how smooth it was, but also what it enables them to do. So they can now d distribute their software directly to their users without having reams and reams of, of complicated instructions. There's different channels for stable releases and development releases and edge releases, and so they can they can channel different parts of their user base easily to different um, versions of the code. They um, they actually came back. They did a little survey of their developers and their users because the user experience of installing these is also very important. And they came back with one of my favorite lines describing it which is this experience is like if Docker and Apt had a baby. <laughs> this is what you would get. Both of these, of course, are, are beautiful technologies. Docker's a great process container. Apt is, is awesome and has been for many years. Um, and Snaps kind of give you the best of both of those worlds from a from an, if you think of it as an application container, it gives you everything that you need to run that application, not just a, not just a single process, but multiple processes in there. And it gives you that, that simple user experience of, of installing and upgrading that, that apt gives as well. So I think that's a, I think that's a lovely description of it. Um, here's some, a bit more of a, of a description about how they work. These are an application snap is, is isolated and contained. We use AppArmor and SetComp to, to do that. Each app has access to its own 
specific area for writing files. Other applications can't, can't write in there. That also allows us to do transactional updates um, in a way that, that in a deb-based system, and by the way, the deb-based version of Ubuntu is not going away. This is not a, a replacement for that. It's a, it's a parallel path alongside of it. We talk about the deb-based version of Ubuntu, which will always exist, as being classic Ubuntu. And those very same bits, it's not a different version of the, of the bits, but we package up those, those same bits in a snap-based architecture as well for certain use cases where the snap-based um, architecture is, is more applicable. Um, I'm gonna... I'm not going to go through and read that, read that whole thing. Um, Snapcraft is the name of the, the developer tool that helps you create snaps. Um, also, the name of the website, snapcraft.io. Um, and this is the this helps you it's a series of tools and commands to let you snap up applications to place them in different channels to find out what snaps are available to put parts together. You can combine common pieces and common interfaces that already exist um, and Snapback, Snapcraft provides the capability to do, to do all that. Um, there's a mailing list, there's docs. Some of them are great. Some of them need some improvements. We'd love any feedback you you have on on that. And then there's also what we've called a playpen. It's on GitHub. Um, this is an area that contains sample snaps. It's where people come and, and try things out. Sometimes people will just look at look at those snaps that are there. Sometimes if they're snapping something up for the first time, they'll put it in the playpen and get help from from folks who have a bit more experience in this particular area. If you want to just explore what some things look like, that's a good place to 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 look. Um, so that's snaps in general, not Ubuntu specific. Happily work on SUSE um, and other operating systems. When we bring that into the Ubuntu world, we create something called Ubuntu Core. So now this is the, a product that comes from Canonical called Ubuntu Core that is, that is the result of that thinking about snaps and, and um, the security requirements and the operational requirements. And what Ubuntu Core is, is taking that notion of snaps and applying it all throughout, the snap, all throughout the stack. So it is a full snap architecture. The kernel is a snap. The hardware abstraction um, is, is, and interfaces are isolated in a, what we call a gadget snap. The, the principles of the operating system itself are in an OS snap. And then there's the application snaps um, on top. Um, and so what it means is those same benefits of, of updates, of, of confinement, of transactional um, and atomic updates can apply at the operating system level as well, independently of the apps. Um, and it's, it's that version of Ubuntu that is being used across that full range of, of devices in IoT. Now this Nextcloud box device is running classic Ubuntu in this version, but we'll transition it to Ubuntu Core in the, in the next rev of it. But it is still snaps, Nextcloud is running as a snap on top of classic Ubuntu. Um, and you can do that in your development environment as well. Um, develop on, on classic Ubuntu and, de and develop snaps on there. And people ship devices like that. Not, you know, that's, that architecture isn't limited to the, to the next cloud box. Um, and, and folks across a range of industries are building on Ubuntu core as that, as that full snap architecture. And it is, it's amazing. It's really exciting to, to see what what people do there um, and how it frees them up. What we the feedback we get from device manufacturers in doing something like this is that they they kind of come to realize that most of it, most of them are using Linux already. You know, any that's that's a bit of a given. But what they're doing is they've got they've got a couple folks in the in some lab who are Linux experts who three years ago or four years ago got a, a distro to work, and they've never touched it since. 
Um, and now, when they when it comes to to updating them, um, to to revving the hardware, and so needing needing either um, new kernels or other capability, it it becomes a very scary prospect. And when in faced with some of those risks that we talked about earlier on, um, and the headlines and potentially fines, it's um, it brings to the fore the value of the security and manageability and upgradability capabilities that are inherent in, in SNAPS. It also brings to the fore the benefits for developers and application and service developers to be able to be in control of the update stream that you all put out, um, rather than being blocked, frankly, on, on folks like us or other distros. Um, just for the, the long timers around here, when Ubuntu started and we started putting out releases every six months, that was pretty revolutionary, you know? It, there wasn't a, wasn't a lot of precedent for putting out an, a new version of an operating system every six months. And we put out a new version of the archives and, a, you know, we, we synced with Debian and a bunch of upstreams to provide new, fresh software, the freshest software to the users. And then over the course of that six months, there would be updates, um, but but not instantaneous. There was a process to get new versions of software into the, into the archives. And now that's such, a, such an old-fashioned vision, you know? It's folks, communities like NextCloud, when you have a release, when you have a, a, either a development release or a stable release, you want to be able to deliver that cleanly to your users and to your, your customers um, independently of our six-monthly Ubuntu release cycle, and and snaps are part of what what enables you to do that. So, got this great box. I'm sure everybody will leave here with one of these, and it has Nextcloud on it, which is terrific. But if you think about it as an IoT device, not just a Nextcloud device, you could extend that capability. You could add additional things to it independently of Nextcloud, and I think. It's really interesting to think about what what could you add, what would you want to add, either to this device or other devices that you have at home. I tweeted last night um, about this box and asked what would people want to want to see on it, and these are actually some of the suggestions from the Twitter sphere of um, things that people would want. Rocket Chat came up. Um, because we have been working with the Rocket Chat community already, you can easily install it. That's the command to, to get a Rocket Chat server um, running yourself. The 32-bit the ARM version, I'm not sure if it's in the stable channel or not yet. It might still be in, the, in an edge channel. Um, um, so if you're running it on this particular device, you might need to look for it in a slightly different place. Um, but these are some, some of the other suggestions. Um, OpenHab is a really popular open source IoT gateway um, project. Transmission's a BitTorrent client. The others are, are self-explanatory, I think. Um, and I'm sure you have your own your own favorite apps, either existing projects out there or even, even just a personal project that you're doing yourself. Um, and so what I encourage you to do is to try it and see for yourself. Um, that's the real past proof, the proof's in the pudding, as they say, you know? So, so take a look at that, at that website, try it. We're, we're open to feedback, it's all open source. There's IRC channels and mailing lists, um, as you would expect. Um, we're particularly interested if you're working on other distros, um, not just Ubuntu. Um, and I, I think you'll find it to be a really freeing and empowering experience. Um, just like, just like you're able to, to free your data with the, the work you're doing in Nextcloud and around the box. So thank you very much. Congratulations on the work you've, you've been doing to date. Um, and I hope you have a great conference over the next couple of days.